We just saw how to grow a classification tree using the CART methodology. And in this video, we'll take a look at some generalizations, generalizations of this type of procedure. So the first type of generalization regards this the, the error measure that we used. Remember we had this E sub R, which was the this where where is that? So E sub R was the fraction of points in this region R that was a subset of D dimensional real space, the fraction that would be misclassified if we use a majority vote in that region. And we used this 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 sort of metric, this E sub R, as our criteria for splitting. And this is what is referred to well, in, in this context at least, they refer to as an impurity measure. So let me say different impurity measures or quantities. So the first one was this E sub R and that's the misclassification rate in the region R. Another one which can be used is the entropy H sub R and this has a very nice interpretation actually if we have this we'll redraw this little picture for our reference we had some points oops let me make that blue so we got some blue points here and we've got some red points And if for some region R, maybe this is our region R, there's a, there's a, if we look at the, the empirical probability distribution on this region, that was this thing that we were talking about earlier. We had this, this fraction of points. This is the, defines an empirical probability distribution over the classes in this region. So in this case, the, this empirical distribution has, let's call the blues zeros and the reds one. So the probability of zero in R, maybe we should denote by subscript R, something like that, is, so we, we said blues zero, so that's three out of four, and the probability of ones is one fourth. And if we had other classes, you know, we could have probability of two, and so on. So another option here, instead of using the misclassification rate, we could use the entropy. The entropy of this distribution, which is the sum over classes. So maybe I'll write C. Well, we were using Y before for classes. Let's stick with that. So this is the sum. Let me just say, I'll just say y over all, this is some finite set of classes. And I should mention, this is these are all generalizations for the case of classification. So the possible classes are some finite set, and we would sum over these. And we have this empirical distribution times the log. And it's minus this quantity. That makes the entropy positive. So instead of using the misclassification rate, you could instead use the entropy. And this has a, a very, actually a very appealing interpretation, which is we want to choose a split. Let's go back to one of these earlier examples here. So in our very first example, when we were talking about decision trees, we had these ones, reds, and the blue zeros, and we said well, let's make our first split here. And this was appealing because th that made this whole region be all have the same class. And therefore, the empirical distribution would be the probability of 1 would be 1, probability of 0 would be 0, and so the entropy would be 0 for this region. So, right, if we 
computed the entropy, wherever it is. So the probability, by convention, we take 0 log 0 to be 0. And 1 times log of 1 is also 0, because log of 1 is 0. So the entropy for that left-hand region, go way back up to our example here, is 0. And we would get some entropy over here, which is not great. But you can think intuitively, at least, that this using the entropy, you're trying to to be as certain as possible about what's going on in each of the regions that you're you're splitting it into. So you want to make these each of the region as each of each of the regions as homogeneous as possible. That's what the entropy is doing. If you used the entropy instead of the misclassification rate. And if you use this, you would just plug it directly in back here, wherever it is, in these, these criteria. You would just use the entropy of the region instead of the misclassification rate. Another generalization, another, another option that people use, which I won't go into too much detail, I'll rate it as G sub R. It's called the Gini index. Sometimes people use it often used for for this type of impurity measure in this setting of cart and the genie index is the sum again over y's just like here and this time it's probability of y times 1 minus the probability of y so that's all the Gini index is doing. And so these are so these are some ways to generalize that previous. These actually are recommended. The entropy and the Gini index uh, tend to work better than the misclassification rate, so probably is be better to use one of those. And also the Gini index has um, has some nice analytic properties that make it work better for that make it make it easier to work with. Let me mention now I'm going to follow the book. I'm going to mention a few other issues associated with this this cart model, and I'm going to follow the, the so hasty. Tib Shirani and Friedman have a book called, what's it called? The Elements of Statistical Learning, and I, I believe it's available freely online. And um, I'm just going to mention a few other issues that they talk about. Well, they, they talk about, they, I'll follow their, the order that they talk about them here. So categorical predictors in the sense that the predictors the features x, i, j, each of the different j's, may not be in, it may not be a real number. So you might have, one of your features might be just from from some finite set, some arbitrary set of, of possibilities. And so you can't do the trick. It doesn't make sense to talk about, well, I mean, I numbered them here, but if they weren't ordered, you know, it does, it wouldn't make sense to talk about splitting when this is like less or equal to some value. That, that's not really meaningful in the setting where you just have some arb some abstract set. But it turns out there's a very clever trick that one can use, at least in the case of binary classification, to very efficiently find the optimal split, even for categorical predictors. So that's a very nice thing. Another uh, possibility, something that might come up, is if you have a loss matrix, in other words, it's not, you know, uh, getting, predicting one class when you should have predicted another, it's not necessarily, you know, the, the error is not necessarily the same for different, different types of errors. And this can also be incorporated into the, the growing the tree procedure. You can incorporate the loss matrix in a, in a smart way. Another issue that might come up is if you have missing values. So we were assuming that we had these, right, we had these x1, y1s, etc. And 
it might turn out that some of the values, like maybe x1j for some j, is missing. It's just not available. It's na. And it's just blank. So it turns out that uh, there's, well, one way that this can be handled, the, the, the recommended way, is to use what's called surrogate variables. I won't go into that, but I just want to mention so you're aware. Another thing which you might be sort of wondering about is we only were considering binary, uh, well, bi not only binary splits, but also, we were only considering splits that were sort of aligned with with one of the axes, which seems like a very, a very, very rigid, very restricted type of split. I mean, why not why not allow splitting along something like this linear combinations at least? And there are models where you can do this. Uh, there are generalizations in which you can split on linear combinations linear combinations instead of just along one coordinate but in fact it, it turns out that for for whatever reason uh, these well well one one thing is that it's it's less efficient it's much less efficient that there's not a, a very um, efficient way because there's many more possible linear splits. Well, there's infinitely many. And another reason why you might not want to do this is because it doesn't, at least empirically, people have found that it doesn't tend to give much better performance, which is kind of surprising. But that's, uh, especially when you combine this, the, the cart model with with the aggregation techniques that we're going to talk about very briefly. And so the one last thing which will lead to these aggregation techniques is that is there's this instability in these trees in the sense that a very small change in your data set could result in a in a very drastic change in the resulting tree. So it's very sensitive to the data and this instability gives this makes the the resulting tree have what we you we refer to as high variance the it's the estimator in statistical speak has high variance and so as a result it has generally has lower performance but there's a fantastic way to get around this or at least to mitigate it to some degree using aggregation. And that's what we're going to talk about next.